So, hello and welcome to our Smart Annotate part of our webinar session. My name is Fabian Wolf and I'm product man manager and the leading developer of the software Smart Annotate. And joining me is Jan Stuttfang. He is the CEO of our company and will help me answering questions which came up, come up during the webinar and also at the end of the presentation. The webinar will be recorded and you will receive the, the record via email. The first part of the webinar is a presentation part and the second one is a live demo within Creo. After, after the live demo, there's a Q&A session where we try to answer uh, questions you wrote into the question panel and Maybe if there are too much, too, too many questions, we will try to answer them via email. So I want to start with uh, what's the motivation for that software tool. So we got many requests for a management tool that helps support uh, of standardized text. So um, what what is the problem the people have? So in many companies, the cut users create annotations and express the textual content of these annotations in their own words. So for consuming purposes, you always have to deal with different kinds of texts and the number of variety is very big as the um, designers always make their own formulations for that. Also, existing texts are reused from existing drawings and models, just copied to another one. And if these texts are uh, obsolete or outdated, so you have an error propagation because um, you reuse that false content. Also, there are insufficient possibilities to provide and enforce specific textual entries. So. Imagine you have um, a text and the user will specify a value, for example, outer edges, and he will enter a specific value. Using symbols, you are able to provide a, a value list the user can choose from, but it's not possible to enforce a specific value or um, enforce the user to choose from, from the list and not just enter any kind of value. Also, um, textual information cannot always be provided in the native language of the consuming people. In a, in a, a global playing company, this is more and more important because when people create the texts in their native language, not of, it's, it's often the case that the consuming people speak a different language and there you always have uh, a loss of information then. And the last point is um, when choosing and positioning and filling Creo objects like symbols, tables, nodes, formats, all types of Creo con objects which contain text, it's in Creo a time-consuming task because when you have a tons of symbols in the company, you have to choose the right one you need in this specific situation then you have to browse through all of them. And at least for symbols, you have a preview, but for other kinds of, of items, you don't have. So on the left side of the view, there is a, an example um, of, a, of a customer. So I decided not to use an English one because uh, this, is, this visualizes a part of the problem. You see this is German text and on the left side there is some description and on the right side there are some values the user can set. In the middle, the middle image shows that you can uh, set some groups within a, within a symbol and the group names are done in German. So when an English, English speaking user will add this symbol, he will have to deal with the German group names. So what is very bad. And also the descriptions for the values, same story. And here we have also the example for value lists you can provide for the users, but you are not able to enforce a specific value as every 
content can be entered there. So what are the main goals of the software? It, you can see Smarant has, as a framework for managing various kinds of textual data. So um, you still want to have a flexibility in how to create your content because every company does it in a different way. So it's not, not, a, not a strict um, uh, told uh, kind of um, visualization of the objects. So you are still able to design your symbols, your tables, your nodes, uh, arrange them in the way you want to do it. So, but the first question is, what does uh, in involve all uh, textual content? So it's the title block on, on the drawing, of course. And this contains a format and drawing tables. Also parameter values may be called out within the title block. So also textual dependent and notes, symbols, drawing tables. Um, we also have the intention to simplify uh, the user to choose the right item as he would not have to choose it from a huge pool of, of items which are available, but just for, from a, a small selection of items which are for the context he works in are, are valid there. So if he creates uh, a plastic part, maybe he will get a, a certain set of annotations like symbols. And if he creates a sheet metal part, he will get another set of symbols. So he always gets the right content for its object. Um, and also um, the text he will enter shall be uh, validated by the software. And if, val if values are entered, um, which are expected not to be valid, then the user is notified for that. And yeah, and one one other story is that um, every cat administrator knows over the time you you get more and more Creo templates like symbol files and table files and formats and so on. And if something changes, you have to update all of them. So it's our goal to minimize the number of required Creo templates. So when you when you're at the point of I want to do standardization, you will have you need the willingness to spend efforts on standardization and maintaining textual data, and this willingness is used to rise from any kind of suffering. So you need in the first first point you need a concept where and how to arrange. Uh, the different kinds of textual contents within the model and the drawing. When you're using just simple uh, symbols like I showed before, the user can place it just freely anywhere on the drawing, on the top left, on the right corner. So um, this is bad for the consumption because the people consuming it will always have to find it on the drawing and looking for the, the data he needs. And also, you you have to analyze all the used text on a drawing created in a specific time frame, gather, categorize, and harmonize all of these texts. And this is, of course, this is a, a huge effort you have to spend there, but it's worth it. Also, um, the Creo templates like symbols and so on, you have to create and prepare for Smart Annotate. And at the end, if you have your Creo templates and you have your, your texts harmonized and entered into the database, you will be able to define smart annotate objects. And these are the prepared ones the user can use to create content very quickly on the drawing or in the model. So what does standardization of texts include? Um, here's the example again from the previous slide, um, here you have to gather all the used text and you have to enter them into a database. Smart Annotate gives you an opportunity for this um, to just, just enter the texts and you can also use values on this. And for each text will get a unique text ID within the database 
So when using it for the for the objects, then you can uh, just reference on this text. And also um, for all required languages afterwards, a technical translation has to be done. So the creation of the Creo templates uh, does mean you need to create Creo objects like symbols, um, tables, but not directly text files because um, this is a special case here. Um, the Creo node text files can just be uh, opened and placed on the drawing. But um, here we have the text within a database. So what does the text file here mean? I will come back to that at the end of the slide. So um, first of all, very important, when creating the templates, the templates are created language independent. So there is no English word or no German word or something like that within it, only a special syntax. The example here, the symbol shows there is a, a A and a V, which are two prompts which are filled with, us, with uh, textual content and the prefix L1, L2, that means in the upper line there is uh, the main language entered and the secondary language in the line beneath it. So um, how does it look like when Smart Annotate fills it? You see that first language is English and the second language is German and also the user may have entered or chosen a value like minus uh, 0.2. Um, so I come back to the example of the node. So for the symbol, you have a, a file dot sim which carries your syntax. But for nodes, you do not have that. So um, it's possible there to provide a special, a so-called pattern file which provides that pattern. And you can also use it in the same way, pretty much the same. And you will get out of that a result like this one. So the one, an, another interesting point is to, how is the format generated? The drawing format so, and the title block, of course. Um, first of all, you need just only one format file for each paper size because it's, again, uh, no language dependency within the format and also no tables contained. The tables forming the title block will, will be created by putting multiple of these tables on top of each other at a predefined position, specified in drawing coordinates. And additional, and some tables may contain the translation syntax, others may not contain this. And also in addition, you can uh, position symbols uh, within the title block or at any place on the drawing sheet. So one table may look like this, giving the frame or the grid for the title block. Another one delivers the parameter callouts then also symbols can be used. And this table has the translation syntax. So the, the cells of the table will be, have a translated label then. So what we get as a result is, looks like this. So we have um, values the user may uh, set for the parameters. We have translated symbols, translated, uh, texts in the cells and also just graphical symbols. So when we have our text ready and we have our uh, templates done, then we can start using the administration dialog of Smart Annotate. And in the first run, we create a filter structure. This is on the left, the filter tree. Um, the filter tree is used to um, break down the huge pool of objects for the user to a minimum amount of objects which are relevant in the current situation for him. So when he creates, as I mentioned before, when he creates a plastic part, he only wants to see the plastic part symbols. And if he creates a sheet metal part, only see the sheet metal symbols. 
So you can organize that filter structure in many ways, like um, the, what kind of uh, part you create, or um, even the site of the of your location. So the continent, the country, the company site, the division you're working in, and so on, and break it down into your specific working situation. Um, this this filter is um, can be preset. So if you open, for example, a sheet metal part, you can combine that with a specific parameter, the global filter parameter, and then you can save, you can define for each start model you have, which filter will be active when Smart Annotate is open the first time. So the, the user will work in the correct context directly. Um, when assigning objects to the to the filters, you will profit from inheritance mechanism because if you if you imagine you have one symbol you want to have in each filter because everyone needs it, then you would uh, without the inheritance mechanism you would need to assign it to every filter. But uh, with using the inheritance mechanism, you can uh, assign it to a subordinated filter and all. Uh, all child filters of that will inherit this content. So, and if you want to remove it, you do just remove it at one place, not in within every content uh, filter. So, the second step after you created your filter structure is creating the objects like nodes, like symbols, like formats. Creating them um, is done using the plus button. So, you say, I want to have a new node. And then you combine, you are using your text you have predefined. And you can also use for nodes, of course, as a pattern file. For symbols, you, you uh, take a symbol file. And you can say, I will call out uh, variable texts. And user shall maybe configure groups for the symbol and so on. And the last step when you've done that is then assign these objects to your filters. So summarizing and visualizing this a little bit, little bit more, um, how is the configuration organized? So first you have your translation files. Um, after you standardize your text, you may have an external text database which uh, does synchronize these XML-based translation files within the Smart Annotate configuration by a batch worker, for example. Uh, you may also um, hold your text within an Excel sheet and use an import functionality Smart Annotate provides also to import these texts. On the other hand, you have uh, your create Creo templates and together with these textual contents, you will create your object definitions like nodes, symbols, tables, and so on. Assigned to the filters, you can use the user can use the UI to assign or create these objects within the Creo drawing or within the model. As the last slide before I move on to the live demo, um, here is simply displayed how the translation mechanism works. So the Creo templates are retrieved from the configuration directory, added to the drawing or to the model. And for an uh, example of a symbol, the variable texts and groups are set as defined by the user or just configured um, within the Creo object. And the texts are used according to which language the user has set. So it's possible to just choose the language from German to Chinese or from English. And you also can use multiple languages like first line always English, second line is the language of the consumer maybe. Good, then I move on to Creo. I have a, a model here without drawing frame three views with some dimensions, one drawing sheet, and I will start creating content using Smart Annotate. 
Within the RIMS smart annotate, there's the administration group, which allows to configure the, the contents the user can apply to the, to the models. And you can access the, the user dialog by the annotate button. Move the dialog a little bit to the left so we see what happens here on the on the drawing format. On the on the main tab, there are some there is the the um, active solid model written down, and you have a language setting layout. And in the lower area here is the format management layout. Here you can set the, the sheet size, and you can define a predefined uh, drawing format. So I will apply now the default one. So you see we retrieved here a drawing format. And in addition, um, multiple drawing tables were placed on top of each other at the same location. So um, in addition, there are some symbols created. Also here we have a symbol, we have four symbols, some contain text, some are just graphical. And also there are parameter called called out within it. The language now is German, so that you might understand it, I change it easily to English. And you see all labels within the cells just, and also the, the symbols just uh, change the language at the push of a button. The values called out within the within the title block may also be manipulated using the parameter metadata management. So here we have, for example, a multi-language parameter, which can be set, switch to the this value. I apply it, it will be called out within the description area. And if I change back to German, I will see I'm sure you know that this is this is the, the German word for housing. Okay, so the next what I want to show you a very powerful tool is um, creating standard texts on your drawing over the new Cree model. So we have predefined to our uh, active filter, we have predefined um, standard nodes, which can be created on defined drawing sheets. So I will create this one on the first sheet and we only have one. So this one as well. I will include all available um, blocks here and just say, okay, apply. And Smart Annotate creates now textual contents at a predefined location on my drawing sheet. So I can reserve specific space on my drawing for specific content. Moving to the first tab, I can now include, for example, German as second language, and I will see that the empty space is filled then with the German translation. So I might also uh, translate to English for my colleagues in, in China. We also see that um, right now I have three languages, English, Chinese, and German, and also you can also do it in for three languages. And it's also possible to just have one language and do always the translation mechanism and reduce the amount of text on the drawing or the model. So um, what I also wanted to show is that you can enforce specific values. So um, here, for example, for this parameter value, there is a regular expression which enforces uh, the format of a of a date. So we will get notified on that. And also, also there is a notification center which always prompts us when any, anything is not going right. So here, parameters are designated. The designation state is wrong. So the Notification center will tell me, and I can directly resolve that issue. So um, here for the for the standard nodes, I have the possibility to um, set predefined values. 
like here outer edges I'm able to manipulate that value by setting it within it so and therefore it can be enforced that only a value out of this list is written to that value you can also say that uh, there is a, a user input available it always depends on the case so here again for example it's not allowed to have an empty value or just if I enter something because I get more additional information on that if I click on on that and also notification center to, to, tells me not a valid value so okay I'm fine again good um, notes can be placed by going on the notes tab and also have uh, some values you can enter here placing very easily you get uh, the preview and you can use for example placing by leader and so on a row head and so on and so forth um, at this point I want to show that the content created on the drawing is uh, protected by the software so when software is running you will not be able to manipulate that values and if you want to do it you have um, the software ensures that only using smart annotate you can change the values and then you have the validity check of course so I will create now uh, a second drawing sheet using default so I change to it and um, yeah here I can choose for example not to have a3 but a2 a little bit bigger there um, so now I can say for example I want to have it my standard annotation also on the second sheet so another very powerful mechanism here is uh, using the numbered nodes which are stacked so um, just place it you get a preview and can select the starting position the included ones here's a snapping for the second column of the node it's also possible to uh, indent these nodes like this for example so make 2a out of out of 3 and so on um, you can also use a flag mechanism in order to reference geometry using using the callouts I just create quickly a, a drawing view um, the scale a little bit bigger so what I can do now is I go to the flag tab say okay notification center already told me there is um, some contents marked as flag but there are no flags nodes available so I can do that quickly here so and now I have my entries of referencing each other and also with non-active dialog you will recognize that you will quickly get the info which node part of the node belongs to that flag symbol um, okay another part is creating symbols creating symbols is also possible to have just graphical content and so on you can also fill uh, choose from groups or also use uh, variable fill the variable text just as we have seen at the standard annotation and and also yeah I will delete this one because I want to add their uh, drawing table you yeah, have a pretty fine drawing table um, clicking the right mouse button I can flip it from the one side to the other and there is a snapping mechanism for the drawing sheet for example to quickly edit I can add another one 
and my drawing table also snaps with the other table. Using tables, it's all also possible to, to use uh, tables with a repeat region. And you see it's um, also resolve the values. Okay, so far uh, for the 2D mode. Um, and you already recognize that Smart Annotate is not a pure MBD product, but also supports the, the workflow in the 2D. But we try to also offer these uh, possibilities in the 3D mode. But there are, of course, uh, some different uh, situations. Um, so um, I will here show the, the standard annotations. Using the same symbols, same definitions as in 2D also works in 3D. So I will just quickly add this one. Of course, there's a difference. I do not choose the drawing sheet, but the corresponding um, combination state. And I see I got my annotations created here. Also, the stack notes will work. The standard annotations are placed on a um, annotation plane, um, which is not flat to screen, um, but the, the numbered nodes will be created on uh, flat to screen. And if they reach the, the lower bottom of the graphical area of the combination state, they will be broken into another combination state, which will be dynamically created then. So just applying. And we will see that here in the bottom area, two new combination states will be created. So creating this and creating the annotation features and assigning to the um, annotation features will takes takes a little bit of time. So for example, here, these are organized in these annotation features in the footer of the model tree. And we see the text broken into two different combination states. Adding nodes, for example, is uh, pretty similar to the 2D mode. Choosing, I get a preview. I can say, OK, into com uh, current com combined state, you can choose the annotation plane and the, yeah, the owning uh, annotation feature for it. Choose the references. Go for it and confirm. So pretty much as we see saw in 2D mode, we can do as well in, in 3D mode. So and quickly get our content textual and no Google Translate, always well prepared uh, technical translated content, well prepared for the user. So thank you for this. And now I will give the word to Jan, which might have some questions from from your side. Well, thanks, Fabian, uh, for the uh, nice presentation. Uh, hopefully, everybody did understand everything on the, the Smart Annotate. Uh, yes, we got uh, a few questions in here already. So the first one is quite uh, easy. It's about uh, uh, for what CRIA versions uh, is um, Smart Annotate uh, available? Smart Annotate is available for CRIA 3, 4, 5, and also 6. OK, that seemed to be easy uh, question. So there's more difficult, or no, it's easy again. Uh, can the, co the complete configuration be stored on an Edward drive? Yes, it's possible. Um, so you can manage it on a network drive and using a special environment variable, you can, uh, the, the client installation of Smart Annotate can point to that um, configuration on network drive using an UNC path, for example. Okay, and there's uh, just one another question right now. So this is about uh, a configuration, yeah, more or less a configuration things. Uh, it's uh, about if you have been creating all these uh, content in a 2D area, 
can you reuse this content in a 3D uh, area? Yes, exactly. So what we have seen is uh, I just created a content on the 2D and then used exactly the same symbols and same object definitions to create this content in 3D. But of course, it's possible to have unique uh, ones for drawing and for, for um, solid mode. That would be possible as well. But if you have done the efforts for standardizing your texts and your your setting up your Creo templates and so on, you can directly use them from 2D to 3D. And Smart Annotate helps you to um, support the process of migrating your 2D stuff into the 3D world. Yeah, that, there's just another question coming in right now. Uh, it reads out, is it possible to combine Smart uh, Annotate with Smart Assembly? <laughs> um, that's a good question. And um, I would say it depends. So what you want to achieve with it? And um, maybe we can di get directly in touch and we write you an email and you can explain what you want to, what you do with that combination. Well, ho hope that answers your question. And yes, please feel for um, getting in touch with us directly. Uh, so I do not have any more questions right now. So um, I just want to point out to the coming up uh, webinars this afternoon and uh, tomorrow. Um, if you have any feedback, comments, uh, questions to the webinar to me or Fabian, please feel to contact us by email. Uh, asking for demo licenses, asking for special web sessions and so on. And yeah, with this, I want to thank you for listening and thanks Fabian again for his presentation. And this will close the webinar for now. Bye-bye.